I don't know if you knew this, but Miro has a marketplace with apps from third-party developers. It's a little bit hidden in the UI, but there are a couple of nuggets in there and apps that are actually quite helpful. So in this video, I want to give you a rundown of what I think are currently the best apps in the Miro marketplace. So let's start with my favorite app, or maybe I should say favorite two apps because I would see them bundled. And those are the Miro QR Sticky app and the Miro QR Pictures app. And those are both developed by Miro Labs. And basically what they allow you to do is to create a portal to your Miro board that other people can use to add content. What does that mean? Let me show you. So here on the left side, I have the Miro QR Stickies and I need to create a frame to get started. Now I have to frame, I can generate a QR code like this here and also add it to my board. So let's say, for example, I'm placing it somewhere here on the right side. Now, what participants can do is they can take out their phone, they can open their camera app, then they can scan this QR code and it basically opens up a website where they can add something. For example, let's say I'm typing hello, send sticky, and it will appear here on the board, as you can see. So I'm zooming in here. And I think this is so cool because you can basically use that to bridge the gap to easily allow people, let's say in a hybrid scenario to add things on the board quickly without them needing to be on a laptop. They can just use the phone. And I think it's super cool to use. I've done it a couple of times and it's always a charm to use. The QR Pictures app basically works the same way. You can fire it up, then you can select the frame, generate QR code. And then again, if participants scan the QR code, I'm just going to scan it from the left side, then they open it up. They can actually take a picture with the phone. Um, let's say, for example, I'm using these microphones here. Boom, use photo, send picture, and then it will magically appear right on this frame. And again, I think this is super cool. This allows really cool use cases and interactivity with participants. Highly recommend to check out this app. Next up, there's also a separate QR code app that I use sometimes to link to forms or to a website. So this is the QR code generator. Check it out in the store. And what it basically allows you simply is to put in a link and then for that link to create a QR code. I've done this a couple of times for uh, surveys, for um, linking to websites. And I think this is also something handy to have at hand. Not so cool as the uh, direct import, but still quite valuable. Number three on my place of my favorite apps is the Timeline Builder. This is a small one, a simple one, but helpful for anything related to timelines or monthly views or weekly views. So if you can see here on the left side, basically when you open it up, you can put in a couple of settings. First of all, you can select which kind of timeline scope you want to be on. So for example, let's select quarters, Q1 to Q4, and then you can create swim lanes. For example, I'm going to create one for me and then one for Rene. Then you can also pick the style um, and the orientation. And once you click insert, you have a beautiful and very quickly done timeline. And you can do this for weekly views, monthly, days of the week, and even hours. So I think that makes it very interesting for project planning, for road mapping. Really cool, really handy, and super simple to use. The next app that I would like to highlight is the Board Translator. That's very straightforward in terms of what the app does because the name already implies it. It translates the board for you. So let's take a look how that works. So I'm going to open up the board translator here on the left side. When you first configure this, you have to go into settings and then you have to put in a deep L uh, account key. You get that if you sign up for deep L on their website uh, for the free API, it's very generous. You will never bounce against the limits, except if you do some crazy stuff, which I'm not doing, but deep L I have the feeling it's a bit more reliable than Google Translate. So it's definitely uh, worth taking that second to create an account. Now in the settings, I can select the target language. So let's switch that to German and then click save. And now I go into the plugin settings and I can select everything that is here on the board. Then I can uh, click translate selection. And what it does if we zoom in now, 
it should translate everything that is on the board. You see it popping up. Woche 5, Situation, wie man als Moderator mit schwierigen Situationen umgeht. So it's translating everything. It can screw up the layouting a little bit, but it's fine. It doesn't take too much work. At least it's saving me quite a lot of time to need to translate this. And now I just need to edit over it to get the layout back and then I'm done. Really helpful app, especially if you do a lot of international multi-language work. Another app that's worth highlighting is the Sticky Pack app. So this is something I also use sometimes. And let's open it up so we can see how it works. Basically what this allows you to do is to quickly create sticky packs that you can make available for people on the board. So this is great for both preparation, but also when you're running a session and suddenly you need a lot of sticky notes for people to do something, you can use the same app. When I open it up, I can make some settings about the style of these sticky packs, the colors available, the shape. But I think what's even more interesting are the layout options, because here, for example, what I can do is I can select what content they should have. So so for example, let's say I pick content, pack index, I click create, then you see a number here at the front. But also what we can do, and that makes it super interesting for uh, kind of creating sticky notes in a live session, is I can select online users per pack, then I can click uh, a crate and you see that my name is right at the front and center of the pack. If you would do this with multiple people, then you would have each pack separated by the name for each person online currently on the board. So I think this is really cool. Um, saves a little bit of time, especially in preparation and is a really cool effect when you're running a live session. Uh, so you don't have to like uh, duplicate um, uh, sticky notes around, which often takes much more time than you think at the start. And lastly, a bit of a fun app to highlight is the Avatars app. Um, here you can see on the left side, there's an avatar already visible. I can give it a name, let's say Daniel. And now basically what I can do is I can change like the appearance of this avatar. For example, I can scroll down and try to pick a hairstyle that roughly suits me. This looks good. Let's see eyebrows, maybe more like this. Uh, let's do some funny up looking eyes and then also some glasses like this. And then I can just select this, put it on the board. And then I have basically an avatar of myself here right on the board. And I think that's quite fun. It's a bit more playful, but uh, definitely a cool effect uh, for making something engaging, fun, but at the same time productive by, for example, using these avatars to indicate where people should work on on the board. So these were the apps that I think are valuable and that I recommend you to check out. In all honesty, I think the marketplace is still in its baby shoes for Miro, which is kind of surprising because Miro has self-proclaimed more than 70 million users, but the marketplace, yeah, there are not a lot of great apps in there except those that I showed you and maybe a handful more that you can explore on your own. But I think this is going to change because Miro just announced that there will be widgets that people can place on the board and third-party developers can create. And I think those onboard widgets are much more valuable, interesting for both developers, but also users. So I think this will make a big push. But that it is for now. And let me know if you have another a mirror app that you would like to highlight. So put it down in the comments below so we can all learn from it and maybe explore some other interesting apps.